Michael Bennett has been one of the most polarizing figures in the NFL since he entered the league as an undrafted free agent back in 2009. The defensive end had a rather underwhelming college career at Texas A&M, with an all-Big 12 honorable mention as his crowning achievement. While Bennett certainly showed flashes of brilliance, many scouts felt his college tape was far too inconsistent to invest a draft pick in him. After passing on him at the draft, the Seattle Seahawks reached out and signed Bennett, but waived him during camp. He ultimately got his first start in the NFL with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and after a career year in 2012, when he set career highs in tackles, sacks, and forced fumbles, he signed with the Seahawks in a free agency. Bennett's time in Seattle was infamous for a number of reasons, actually. While he was a stud on the field, earning three straight Pro Bowl selections and helping lead the Seahawks to a victory in Super Bowl 48, he has garnered a lot of attention, some negative and some positive, as a result of how outspoken he has been on a number of social and political issues. There is a very clear divide amongst NFL fans. Most either love Bennett or hate him. What's fun about football, and really sports in general, is that even in a rather uncomfortable situation, there are still random little things that pop up that are so absurd that nearly every sports fan can agree on. And Michael Bennett's insanely small shoulder pads are definitely one of them. Bennett, who stands at a legitimate 6 foot 4 inches and carries a muscular 275 pound frame, wears shoulder pads that are quite literally designed for kickers, the runts of the NFL litter. Just as a point of reference, Bennett has 3 inches and nearly 60 pounds on Steven Gostowski, the kicker for the New England Patriots. It isn't just the size difference between kickers and a defensive lineman that makes the shoulder pads look so absurd either. At the NFL level, the equipment is designed differently for the different positions. And given the intense disparity between the physicality of playing on the D-line and being a place kicker, you could imagine why Bennett looks so absurd in his tiny shoulder pads. He looks like a giant kid that dressed up as an NFL player for Halloween, and he had his mom stuff the shoulders of his jersey with newspapers to add some authenticity to his costume. The Twitter sphere is unsurprisingly chock full of a variety of jokes about them. Yeah, just about every sports media personality has made at least one jab at Bennett's shoulder pads. It's sort of a rite of passage in modern media. So, when exactly did Bennett's love affair with such minuscule protective gear begin, and why? Well, for starters, if you look at old pictures of Bennett playing for the Bucks, you can tell two things. He has always had a thing for smaller shoulder pads, and they have undeniably gotten much smaller in the time since. Since his shoulder pads have somehow become a topic for national discussion, he actually has provided some insight on why exactly he wears them. And as everything does with Michael Bennett, there are a couple of layers to his reasoning. Firstly, he thinks that the diminutive shoulder pads allow him a greater range of motion. Quote, I just like the smaller ones because it makes sure I use my hands and it makes it so I can stretch my arms out all the way, Bennett said. It helps pass rushers, but I don't think it really matters too much because I know how to use my hands. End quote. While there is credence to the fact that there is an added injury risk when you wear less protection, Bennett believes that it is actually protecting him by ensuring that he uses the proper techniques. Quote, it makes me sure I use my hands and not throw my shoulder in there. Instead of just throwing my shoulder into someone, I engage with an offensive lineman the right way, with outstretched arms. End quote. Professional athletes are notorious for having these kinds of quirky superstitions, but this is a little extreme. Sure, Michael, it is the shoulder pads that increases your mobility and allows you to exhibit perfect techniques, pushing you towards achieving peak performance. Definitely not the years and years of practice or the 10-hour days of studying and implementing techniques. It is funny, despite the egocentric nature of many pro athletes, they still cling to this, quote, junk science, bordering on superstition kind of thinking. While it would be fun to just crack jokes about Bennett's shoulder pads every Sunday this season when he suits up for the Patriots, the school of thought on wearing smaller shoulder pads has actually been a league-wide shift, so much so that the New York Times did an entire feature on the trend titled The NFL's Incredible Shrinking Pads. It isn't just exactly breaking news. Anyone who has watched an NFL game before the year 2000 can see the obvious difference. Some of the old heads of the NFL who grew up on bulky equipment believe that it is just vanity that pushes the players towards wearing this cut of padding, suggesting that they want to look slimmer on TV screens around America every Sunday. But that's just a small piece of the equation. These guys genuinely believe it helps them move better, and it isn't just defensive ends, it's across the board. It seems like it started with the guys playing primarily on the perimeter of the field, the defensive backs and wide receivers. These two position groups have very little margin for error. If a defensive back gets blown by, it often results in six points for the opposing team. Los Angeles Chargers safety Eric Weddle echoed this sentiment and actually acknowledged the possibility of there being a placebo effect in play. 
quote, we believe an extra pad might give a fast wide receiver six inches of separation from us in coverage, and that might actually cost our team a touchdown. If that happens enough, it might cost you your job. Whether that's really the case or not, in our minds, we believe it is." End quote. The lighter, quicker, and faster movement has resulted in a race to the bottom of sorts, with both wideouts and corners trying to minimize the weight of their equipment and maximize their speed. Quote, For a receiver, it's about speed downfield and getting in and out of small gaps between the defenders as fast as you can, Willie Sneed, a notorious speedster for the Baltimore Ravens, said. If you're weighted down by padding, you're not necessarily safer at all. You'd be slower and probably get hit more. Right now, a good receiver doesn't have to get hit that much. The only time you really get hit is when you're getting tackled." End quote. It does appear that he had to do some mental gymnastics to reach the conclusion that wearing less pads is actually safer. Not to mention the fact that Sneed has made his career as a shifty slot receiver who can get in and out of routes like nobody's business. So maybe he's just a little bit biased on this. New York Jets wide receiver Jamison Crowder shared a similar sentiment. Quote, I want the thinnest pads possible. I only want what's required, and I get the lightest available versions of that. End quote. Naturally, as the wideouts try to get lighter and quicker, the cornerbacks follow suit. Everything from shoulder pads to thigh pads to hip pads is either shrinking or disappearing entirely. Weddle went as far as saying, quote, Nobody wears hip pads in the NFL. That would be crazy if I saw someone with hip pads in an NFL game. Totally insane. End quote. It has gotten so extreme that most players basically scoff at the idea of wearing any extra padding. Weddle suggested it was basically career suicide. It isn't just speedy wide receivers that see the value in limiting the amount of padding they wear. So many guys feel that way that there has to be at least some validity to it. Whether you are playing inside or outside the numbers, it seems like equipment is going to continue to shrink. Gone are the days of Herschel Walker turning the corner with his bulky thigh pads and lumbering shoulder pads bouncing along for the ride. Herschel Walker breaks tackles and breaks loose. Touchdown! Even running backs today have much more compact gear. It isn't that players never have these quirks before, they always have. Panthers running back Christian McCaffrey's dad, Ed, was a Pro Bowl wide receiver for the Giants, 49ers, and Broncos in the 90s. He detailed how important minimizing the extra weight of his equipment was to him. He would have each part of his gear tailored to be as unencumbering as possible. It went as far as having the belt buckle from his pants removed, cutting the waistband on his athletic supporter in half, and slicing holes in his jersey, all just to shave off a few ounces in weight. Ed was sure to pass along a few tricks to his son when he was coming up in the game. Christian explained a tactic his dad taught him to keep would-be tacklers from being able to drag him down by his jersey. Double-sided carpet tape. Quote, when I was seven years old and starting youth football, my dad taped my pads to my jersey so no one could grab my jersey to tackle me, Christian said. He taught me a bunch of little things like that and I still use them. It's all about removing bulk." End quote. Now, as with every trend, there are always detractors and contrarians that don't buy into the hype. Benjamin Watson, who currently plays tight end for the New England Patriots, reflected on the beginning of his rookie year in New Orleans. Watson knew going into the year that NFL players were going to be bigger, faster, and stronger than the guys he played with and against in college, but he was simply blown away on his first day. The collisions were just… different. He said his first reaction was, quote, I want to wear every pad I can get my hands on, end quote. He was also surprised to see how minimal his teammates' padding was. Everyone's shoulder pads were trimmed and streamlined and almost no one wore their arm, hip, thigh, or knee pads. He said it was to the point that players were even removing the padding pockets in their uniform so that they would be more form-fitting. Quote, there's an intimidation factor. You don't want to look confident and unafraid. Today, it's even more that way than when I was a rookie, end quote. Ever the independent thinker, Watson has not strayed from his original beliefs, so it is safe to assume we won't see him in any Michael Bennett-esque shoulder pads this season. Despite the fact that many of today's quarterbacks are conscientious of the size of their shoulder pads, Eli Manning is firmly in Watson's camp of prioritizing safety. When asked about moving towards smaller pads, he responded bluntly, quote, No, 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 I want to be protected. I, brackets will, go for the newer, safer products when they come out. Other than making sure I can do my normal throwing motion, give me the protection. End quote. At the end of the day, NFL players are going to do whatever it is they feel puts them in the best position to win games, accumulate stats, and ultimately cash checks. If they can wear equipment that they think makes them marginally quicker or faster or whatever, you better believe they are going to do it. And if they end up looking a little slimmer and more aesthetic on TV, well, that's just a bonus. If you're new here, we welcome you, and if you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to do that down below by clicking the subscribe button. 
If you like the video, then like the video. We'd really appreciate it. And last but not least, don't forget to tune into TPS every single day for more cool videos. We'll see you next time.